As a street writer, measuring your writing skill can be difficult to do. You can do things like, you know, U-turns in so many feet or stopping distance at a certain mile per hour. That gives you some clue as to how well you're controlling the motorcycle or how well you can avoid obstacles, things like that. But today I want to give you another tool to help you determine if you're getting better as a street rider and something to gauge your progress by. So I hear frequently from riders who'll say something like, you know, I've been riding for 20 years and I've never crashed. I'm a good rider. Or I've taken 20 motorcycle training courses. I'm a good rider. Or one of my personal favorites, I got a perfect score on the MSF riding test. I'm a good rider. Now these might provide some insight into your riding skill, but they're far from definitive. Not crashing in 20 years may have more to do with how conservative of a rider you are, or especially the type of environment that you ride in, urban versus country. That's different from being a skilled rider. Training courses certainly help, but unless you internalize the training and practice it and perform it on a regular basis, it may not make you as skilled a rider as you might think. And don't get me started on the perfect score in MSF class as a measure of your riding skills. That's like a five-year-old dropping the training wheels on his bicycle and declaring that he's ready for the Tour de France. So if these are not a complete picture of our riding skills, what are some other tools that we can use to determine our riding abilities? Well, have you ever watched these guys riding around the track and marveled at their riding skill and their control of the motorcycle at such high speeds? What can we learn from these riders that will make us better riders on the street? And better yet, what can we take from this knowledge and use it as a measuring stick of our own riding skill on the street? So this week, I thought we'd talk about it. Even though the goal of a MotoGP rider is different from our goal on a Saturday afternoon ride, there are some things that we can apply to our street riding. You know, on the track, one of the most basic measures of who is the best rider on a given day is who wins the race. You know, that one's pretty simple. You stand at the finish line, you see who crosses it first after so many laps, and that rider, whoever crosses it first, was the best rider on that day. But that didn't give us a complete picture, not even close, of who's the best rider. You know, there are things that affect a race, like mechanical issues, the motorcycle design is better suited for a particular track than another, different tire compounds, the bike setups, all of the other riders on the track affect the rider's ability to finish that race in first place. So we can drill down a little bit further and we can look at lap times. This gives us a little more insight into who was the best rider on the track. We might see lap after lap that that rider performs on a consistent basis, but there's one lap that he was three seconds slower in that race. Maybe he made a mistake and ran wide in that corner, cost him a full three seconds in that particular lap. Often that one mistake will cost the rider, will be the difference between that rider finishing in first or second or third place. But even though that provides a little more detail than simply seeing who came in first, it's still far from perfect. You know, and this has very little to offer as a measuring stick for our own riding on the street. To get to the bottom of that, we'll have to dig a little bit deeper into the weeds to find out what that answer is. You know, for the professional racer or the serious amateur, here's where it starts to get interesting. A professional race bike has electronics on it that measure all kinds of stuff. You know, they're... Things like every millisecond that that bike is on the track, it knows exactly the position where it was on the track, and all of that is logged to this report. This can be logged to a data sheet along with other information like the throttle position in that millisecond and place on the track, the front and rear brake usage, the lean angle, the tire grip, the traction. A whole host of data is logged and can be plotted to the track and a professional racer after the race, can look at all this data for the entire race, see what they did right, see what they did wrong, and they can analyze any particular corner or spot on the track. They can see at what point they rolled off the throttle and began applying the brakes. Did they have enough traction maybe to go a foot further into that corner before applying the brakes? And should I brake later in the corner, accelerate sooner out of the corner? Where am I losing time on the track? Where can I gain time? What do I need to improve my lap times? All of that information and the proper application of it out on the track is the difference between being a world champion and an also run. But 
this is all cool information, but it still doesn't provide us anything as a skilled rider out on the street for measuring our own abilities. So how do we measure that using some of this information? So there are some clues hidden in these data sheets that give us clues about how we should ride out on the street. What do you see when you see this rider negotiating a curve? You might say he's extremely smooth in the corners, he's smooth on the brakes, going to the brakes, he's smooth coming off the brakes, he's smooth leaning the bike in, he's smooth going back to the throttle. So is smooth the measuring stick that we can use to evaluate our own riding skills? Well, that gets us a little bit closer, but not quite. A rider can be smooth applying the brakes until he locks them up and crashes. So smooth is close to the measuring stick, but it's not everything. Smooth is the result of something else that makes a rider better on the track and makes a better rider out on the street. And you can actually see it in the race data that these riders capture. I believe one of the best measuring sticks for rider skills out on the track and on the street is minimal necessary control inputs. So what does this mean? Watch a professional rider in the corner. They approach that corner and they begin to apply the brakes one time. They only do it one time and they apply the brakes to the maximum braking force that they need to get around that corner. At the proper time, they smoothly release the brakes again only one time. They lean the motorcycle smoothly one time to the appropriate lean angle to negotiate that curve. At the proper time and lean angle, one time the rider smoothly goes back to the throttle and reduces lean angle to finish the curve and exit it as quickly as possible. You know, some turns are different than others and there are more inputs needed, but the idea is the minimal number of control inputs to negotiate that corner. So what happens when I get out on the track and I try to ride like a MotoGP racer? I approach the corner and I think I've got the proper brake force that I need to negotiate the corner. I get 15 feet further and I realize I'm still going faster than I want to, so I apply more brakes. Now I've got too much brake, so I ease off the brake some. I lean the bike in for the corner and sometimes I'm running too wide or wider than I want to. So I make adjustments to the lean angle to correct that. I pass the apex of the corner and I go to the throttle up a little bit too soon. So I back off the throttle. Okay, now I'm good back on the throttle to exit the corner. So that's a clear difference between a professional rider and me. A professional rider has a minimal number of necessary control inputs. A simplified version of a professional MotoGP rider going into a corner sounds like this brakes, lean angle, throttle. A less simplified version of me on the track negotiating corner sounds like this. Brakes, too fast, more brakes, too slow, less brakes, lean angle. I'm running wide, more lean angle, less lean angle. Throttle, too soon, less throttle. Okay, more throttle. I exit the corner. The difference is the professional rider on the track has three necessary inputs to negotiate a corner and I've got something like nine or 10 on a good corner for me. And that's why they're lifting trophies above their head and I'm sitting right here talking to you about it. The same analysis can be applied to our riding skills out on the street. You know, on the street, we're approaching corners at a much more leisurely pace, but our goal should still be minimal necessary control inputs. Where it's most evident and we're easiest to see is in a new rider class. Watch new riders negotiate a corner. They're on the brakes, they're off the brakes, they lean the bike in, they straighten up, they lean it in again. Sometimes they go to brakes mid-corner, causing more problems. It's a mess of doubt and inconsistency when a new rider's trying to learn for the first time. For experienced riders, to a lesser degree, though for some riders it looks exactly the same as in that new rider class, if we're being honest here. We make more control inputs than are necessary to complete a given task, and that's a clear symptom of a riding deficiency. So monitor yourself the next time you go for a ride. Do you frequently misjudge a corner and have to make mid-corner adjustments to make up for it? Or mid-stop, do you, at a stoplight, do you have to apply more brakes, ease off the brakes, applies more brakes, and adjust that control more than would be necessary for a given task? So focus on accuracy in riding and using minimal necessary control inputs to accomplish the same task. So if you're negotiating a corner and you have to adjust mid-corner, adjust your line, ask yourself some questions. 
What was wrong with the initial steering input? Was it too much, too little, too soon, or not soon enough? What made it necessary to go back to that control that I was using? Did I ride into the corner too fast? Was my head and eye placement lazy and I misjudged the corner? The answers to these questions and questions like this will give us clues to our riding deficiency. So we see a good street rider and we say, man, that rider is smooth. But being smooth is really the result of minimal necessary control inputs. And that is a great measuring stick that separates a great street rider's skills from the average rider's skills. If you found this video helpful or useful, consider becoming a member and supporting my efforts to make videos just like this here on MC Rider. You'll get access to the forums and the field guide with practice exercises to help you develop your skills on any open parking lot. Till next week, this is Kev with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road. Hey, if you like this video, check this one out. I got over 300 to choose from.